You may be seated. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm going to lighten the mood a little first. This old man walks into a church and he starts confessing. <laughs> and he says, Father, I'm 75 years old, 
and I've been married for 50 years. And he said, in every day of those 50 years, I've been faithful to my wife, my loving, adoring wife. But yesterday, I have to say, I was romantic with a 20-something beauty. So he says, uh, okay, well, when was the last time uh, you came to confession? And he says, uh, never, I'm Jewish. So the father says, well, why are you telling me all this? He says, well, I'm telling everybody. <laughs> All right, let's get to the business at hand. <laughs> We're gathered here today to celebrate one of life's greatest moments, to recognize the worth, joy, and beauty of love, and to add our best wishes to the words which shall unite Chelsea and Brad in marriage. I know Chelsea and Brad are so very happy to have all of you here today. Thank you for pressing pause on your busy lives getting all dressed up and driving or flying out here to spend a few hours sharing in this experience that means so much to them. Personally, I'm excited and grateful to have the privileged and unique opportunity to officiate this wedding ceremony. I still remember getting the call from my brother, Michael. I'm Brad's uncle, if you didn't know. Uh, some 24 years ago, and then raced down to the hospital to see this little baby. As many of you know, Bradley was a preemie. He was lying there so peacefully in the warm incubator. And I looked at him, this alien looking, just little nugget of a human. <laughs> and I thought, wow, I've pooped larger specimens than you. <laughs> but my, have you, <laughs> my, you've grown up. And, and truly become a spectacular human being. And somehow along the way, and really what are the odds, you found an equally spectacular woman. I'm just so happy to be sharing this moment with you. I wanted to begin with a couple of literary passages. The first is a very brief one from uh, Shakespeare's King John. It goes, he is the half part of a blessed man left to be finished by such as she. And she, a fair divided excellence, whose fullness of perfection lies in him. Chelsea and Brad, as you have already recognized, each of you can make the other a better person. Each of you can help the other achieve his or her full potential. Each of you can help expose your innate gifts and talents and bring forth the goodness that may have stayed hidden without the other to draw them out. To paraphrase the writer Tom, Tom Wolfe, the right partner can help you become a man and a woman in full. But marriage is more than just about reaching your own individual potential. Marriage is about taking on the world together, leaning on each other, finding strength in each other, and sharing life's experiences. Another passage from the English novelist and poet George Eliot. It's entitled, To Be One With Each Other. What greater thing is there for two human souls than to feel that they are joined together, to strengthen each other in all labor, to minister to each other in all sorrow, to share with each other in all gladness, to be one with each other in the silent, unspoken memories. In essence, it's about sharing in the good times and in the bad times. It's about building a lifetime of memories together. It's about knowing what the other is thinking without the word spoken. It's about the inside joke, the subtle wink, the quiet giggle that only you two can appreciate. You and your spouse are now a team of two. No one else is allowed on the team and no one else will understand the team's rules. Sometimes it'll feel like it's you against the world and that's okay. You'll conquer it together. What else is marriage? Marriage is more than the legal bonds that unite you today. Marriage is love, and it comes in many forms. May you always be able to talk things over, to confide in each other, to laugh with each other, to enjoy life together, and to share moments of quiet and peace when the day is done. Your marriage essentially began before this wedding day, and the efforts of marriage continue well beyond this ceremony's end. A brief moment in time and the stroke of the pen 
are all that are required to create the legal bond of marriage. But it takes a lifetime of love, commitment, and compromise to make marriage durable and everlasting. Today, you declare your commitment to each other before family and friends. Your yesterdays were the path to this moment, and your journey to a future of togetherness will become a little, little clearer with each new day. Chelsea and Brad, with some help from their parents, will now take part in a unity tree planting ceremony to symbolize the roots of their relationship and the continued growth of their love as they become each other's family today. And I'd also like to invite uh, the parents up from both sides. I'll leave you, hold on. <laughs> Chelsea and Brad, today you stand before us, ready to share the rest of your lives together as a married couple. But long before today, your parents provided you with a foundation of love and caring, which has brought you to this point. We will start by adding dirt from Chelsea's childhood home and dirt from Brad's childhood home. This dirt symbolizes their individual families it has been through their years of love and support that have helped shape who Chelsea and Bradley are today, a man and a woman who are ready to be committed in a loving marriage of their own. If the parents would please add the soil to this evening. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, just you can stand for a moment. <clears throat> Let your relationship and your love for each other be like this tree and plant today. Let it grow tall and strong. Let it stand tall during the harsh winds and rains and storms. And let it come through unscathed. Like a tree, your marriage must be resilient. It must weather the challenges of daily life and the passage of time. And just like the tree you are planting, marriage requires constant nurturing and nourishment. Chelsea and Brad, would you please water the seedling? <laughs> Remember to nourish, nourish each other with words of encouragement, trust, and love. This is needed on a daily basis, so each of you can grow and reach your fullest potential, just like this tree. Thank you, parents. You can continue your seat. Chelsea and Brad, 
some of your most enjoyable and lasting memories will be etched in your hearts and minds today. This tree ceremony may be one of them. From this point forward, try to forget all the stress of planning this day. I know it was very stressful. And enjoy your friends and family who have gathered to spend this day with you. The group of loved ones will likely never be together again in the same place. I hope you will take a moment to reflect on how each person has touched your life and why they are here sharing this very special occasion with you today. And finally, a personal piece of advice. Be kind to each other. The experts that study marriages for a living have almost universally come to the same conclusion as to what makes for a lasting, fulfilling, and happy union. So what's the secret? Be kind to each other. When you find yourself arguing over money, or the kids, or the in-laws, go ahead and argue. But don't let contempt and aggression build. Practice listening. Practice understanding the other's viewpoint. Practice being considerate. And most importantly, practice being kind. It's the little things, too. When your partner seeks your attention for the most mundane of things, maybe he wants to read your paragraph from an article he's reading about the latest fitness routine <laughs> that he wants to try. Set down that iPad Air, iPhone 5C, Kindle Fire, HDX, whatever's in your hand, and listen to what he has to say. Be thoughtful, be interested. Heck, go ahead and feign interest. But more importantly, be kind. And maybe, maybe the most crucial time to practice this trait, when one of you may ask the other, honey, do these jeans make me look fat? <laughs> Be kind. It's now time for you to exchange vows. Brad, please repeat after me. I, Brad, give to you, Chelsea. My solemn vow, my solemn vow, to be your faithful partner, to be a faithful partner, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, in good times and in bad, in good times and in bad, and in joy as well as in sorrow, in joy as well as sorrow. I promise to love you unconditionally. I promise to love you unconditionally. To support you in your goals. To support you in your goals. To honor and respect you. To honor and respect you. To laugh with you and cry with you. And to laugh with you and cry with you. And to cherish you for as long as we shall live. And to cherish you for as long as we shall live. Chelsea, please repeat after me. I, Chelsea, give to you breath. I, Chelsea, give to you breath. My solemn vow to be your faithful partner. My solemn vow to be your faithful partner. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. And in joy as well as in sorrow. And in joy as well as in sorrow. I promise to love you unconditionally. I promise to love you unconditionally. To support you in your goals. To support you in your goals. To honor and respect you. To honor and respect you. To laugh with you and cry with you. To laugh with you and cry with you. And to cherish you for as long as we shall live. And to cherish you for as long as we shall live. Now for the rings. As you place the ring on Chelsea's finger, please repeat after me. I give you this ring as I give to you all that I am and accept from you all that you are.
Chelsea, as you place the ring on Brad's finger, please repeat after me. I give you this ring as I give to you all that I am and accept from you all that you are. Now the breaking of glass is traditional in Jewish weddings and has a number of non-denominational interpretations. So we looked through them and there was one that we particularly liked. The glass breaking reminds us that love, like glass, is fragile and must be protected. The glass is broken to protect the marriage. It's with an implied prayer. May your marriage last as long as it would take to repair this glass. Go ahead and break that glass. <laughs> Mazel tov. One of the interpretations said that that was probably the last time a man was going to put his foot down. <laughs> well, now, Brad, I'm going to let you go, but for now, you may kiss your bride. You're officially married, but I'm not quite done. <laughs> One final piece of advice before I send you two off. Trust your partner. For two people who are trying to help each other, it can almost be harder to let the other person help you than it is to be the one who's helping. Trust in your partner's help. It can be harder to believe that your partner is fully committed to a lifetime of marriage than to commit yourself. Trust that he and she are committed. Many find it harder to be loved than to love. Allow yourself to be loved. Trust that person. Love them completely and let them love you. Look, if it all goes to seed, it's going to hurt either way. Better to have gone into it full throttle because full throttle marriage is a thrilling ride. Chelsea and Brad, enjoy the ride. Family and friends, it is my honor to present to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Bradley Bowling. <laughs>
right now, everyone. Thank you so much.